The next thing that I would like to talk about are blending modes. I know that we've already talked about blending modes several times throughout the semester, but now we're going to talk about the idea of what a blending mode is, and not specifically just layer blending modes. Blending modes affect the way elements blend together visually. Blending modes can be layer-based, which is what we've already learned. They can be applied through layer effects or even applied when using a brush. Whenever an option is available to choose a blending mode, Photoshop users will have the option of changing the way the selected element interacts with the other elements in the design. And so I've come up with some tips for using blending modes because sometimes they're a little confusing to understand how they are interacting with other layers and things like that. So first, if it appears that nothing is happening or your effect has disappeared, try changing the blending mode back to normal. This will basically reset it, and so it's back to default. And then you can begin to make adjustments again. And so um, a lot of times when you apply an effect, the effect will have a default blending mode that's not normal. Maybe it's overlay or it's screen or something like that. And so you apply an effect and you're looking at it saying, I don't see anything happening with that outer glow. Why can't I see it? My recommendation, change the blending mode to normal. That will give you kind of a default where you should be able to see whatever color or texture you're applying. And then you can experiment with other blending modes. The blending flows downhill. When a blending mode is adjusted, the results will only be seen with elements under or below it on the layers panel. And so if you have five layers and you apply a blending mode to the fourth layer from the top, you will only see the change in the fifth layer. And then don't forget that when you're working with layers, um, whatever's at the top of the layers panel is the most important. And if it blocks out, it's, if it's opaque, 100% solid. Um, if it blocks out something that's on a layer beneath it, you'll never see it. And so if layer one on your layers panel that's at the top of your layers panel is solid, and you apply a blending mode to layer four, it'll also look like nothing happened because you can't see it. It's being blocked out by a layer above. Blending modes can interact with other blending modes, and so if you have five layers, you could apply a different blending mode to every layer on the layers panel to create a new combined effect if you really wanted to. I recommend to lower the opacity on a blending mode change to create a more subtle change in the design. Sometimes when you apply the defaults in Photoshop, it looks like you've applied a default Photoshop. The key to making things look like you're a good Photoshop user are the subtlety. And so you almost don't realize that it's the cutout filter that you've applied or it's an overlay blending mode. If you bring, if you lower the changes and make them more subtle, they will look more realistic to whoever's viewing your image. And then blending modes can be used on text, imagery, and even adjustment layers. And so um, when you are working in Photoshop, it's always fun to kind of click around and see what's possible. So if you're using text or pictures or even adjustment layers, don't be afraid to also experiment with blending modes. And so in the example here on the right hand side, I've applied a color layer blending mode to a green solid fill adjustment layer to make the entire Germany image look like it's green. And so the top image represents what the file actually looks like. I have a green background on my project. I have the word Germany that has a clipping mask. The pictures inside the clipping mask are all full color. And then on the base layer, I've applied bevel and emboss, a drop shadow, etc. But I still didn't like the way it looked. And so I added a sol solid fill, green fill adjustment layer to the top. You can see here on the previous slide. And then once I had the color sitting on top of the word Germany, I experimented with different layer blending modes until I found the one I liked. And it happened to be the one that is the color uh, option on your layer blending modes. So the easiest way to adjust the blending mode is via layer blending modes. Um, these options can be found at the top of the layers panel and each individual layer on the layers panel can have a different layer blending mode applied. And so this is the method we've already learned, right? And so when I jump to Photoshop, I'll show you this one real quick, but I'm going to focus more on the other or the new blending modes that we're going to talk about. When you adjust the layer blending mode, there's a drop down at the top of your layers panel that says normal. Right now I have color fill two, that layer selected, and so if I hit this drop down I'll have all these different options available to me as layer blending modes and I can click through them and see what happens. Eventually I settled on the one at the bottom that says color and I liked that the best. And so here are some examples. And so this is what my document looked like before I set up a layer blending mode. So the 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 mode or the layer blending mode is set to normal and so I have a solid fill layer sitting at the very top of my layers panel which basically makes it so I can't see anything else that would be in the document. As I click through you can see that different blending modes on the solid fill green layer here 
create different looks. And basically they take that solid green and they blend it down into whatever you would see beneath it on my layers panel. And so I haven't done all of the examples, I just pulled out a couple of them so that you can see. The darken one, multiply, lighten, screen, color dodge, overlay, I kind of like overlay, uh, vivid light, pin light, divide, hue, saturation, and then ultimately color is the one that I liked the best. And so all I did was kind of click through them until I found one that I liked. I actually kind of like saturation too. And so let's, let's jump over to Photoshop and let me show you basically the same thing, but now with the image that we're using for the lecture. And so this is the same image I used in the previous lecture or the previous video for this lecture. And I decided that I, I kind of like it, but I kind of don't. And I want to experiment and see if there's anything else I can do to make it more aesthetically pe pleasing to my liking. And so I'm going to try to do the same thing I did with the Germany example. I added a solid fill layer to the top of the layers panel. You can see that here. And now I'm going to experiment with this, this uh, layer blending mode drop down. And I'm going to click through until I find one that maybe works for my project. And so I'm just going to kind of click through. And, and different things do different, um, will create different results. Now I have a solid, uh, I have a solid color sitting on top of my layer and so there are a lot of the layer blending modes that have uh, an if-then scenario and it depends on all the darker part of the image is going to disappear and all the lighter part of the image is going to disappear. Those only really work if you have two images that have tonal values that change and a solid color is one solid color and so some of the, the layer blending modes you'll, you'll see they won't work but others will like this one's kind of cool. I kind of like that one. Um, but you can kind of click through and see if there's one that works for what you're wanting to do. And so I'm just going to really quickly click through. I, I kind of don't mind that one either. Uh, click through until I find something that maybe I want to work with. Overlay is usually a popular one. That one's kind of cool too. That's soft light, hard light, vivid light, linear light, pin light. And I'm literally just going to click through every single one so you can kind of see how how different things would happen. Now you can compare what's happening in this image to the Germany example that's in the slideshow. And so, I don't know, I still like that one at the top. Which one was that? Darken? No, it wasn't Darken. I should have been paying attention. Multiply. I kind of like Multiply, but maybe I don't like the color of the text on the bottom. I knew I made it maroon, right? I could drag that to the top of the layers panel above the color fill layer and I could use it the color that I had it before. Um, I definitely don't like that though and I'll leave that. You could even lower the opacity on the fill or the opacity of the, the solid fill layer and then you could bring back some of the original color. I, I like it at 100% though. And so this will create another effect or another version of your project that might enhance the overall aesthetic value. You might even want to go back because the the solid fill layer is a bright blue color and it's being affected by the the gradient on on the, the layer that's at the bottom of the layers panel. And so we might even want to go back to that and change it to be black and white and you'll see different things will happen. And so maybe we can reverse that and now we're creating another effect. I could bring this out here. And maybe that's what we end up doing for our project. I actually don't like that, so I'm going to undo it. Okay, so I would like you to experiment with applying a layer blending mode to your project. Either you can do it as I did, where you add a solid fill layer so that the entire page turns to be a solid color. And then you experiment with how the blending modes will blend down. Or you could even apply the blending modes to the layers that are being clipped. And so I have four here. And you could experiment with that as well. When you feel comfortable with modifying layer blending modes, you can move on to the next video. And we'll talk about blending modes that are available when you're applying layer effects.